but we're just here tonight talking about the singer life and what's going on in our community and just trying to share some, you know, bits and pieces of our life that might help um, encourage anybody else out there who's kind of struggling through a difficult time. And yeah. um, also talk a little bit about, you know, the history of our, you know, our careers and getting into the business for those that might just be stepping into the business at a strange time. So strange. with that, tonight with me, I have Lauren Lee. She's a singer, songwriter, band leader. Um, she she's, uh, plays with a number of bands here in San Diego, but she fronts Lauren Lee in the low keys. They do soul, funk, R&B, pop, and you also front Wild Heart, which is a classic country band, right? Yes, yes. And you are a mama to Jack, who just turned 11 years old, right? And um, yes, yeah, you just recently, in the midst of everything happening, you released a five song EP entitled Flare, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Awesome. Yep. Got well, it right. <laughs> let's start there. Tell me how that was and how it's yeah. been releasing um, a new, you know, a new project while all this is going on. Man, I mean, it's not, it was not only a new project, it was like my first real project, yeah. my first real go at, at making an EP and recording music and um, creating something that was really important to me that I've been holding on to for a long time. Um, so yeah, we I released a single on my birthday, which was March 10th, in anticipation of our release date, which was going to be May 7th. And then very shortly after my birthday, everything fell apart, and we lost all our gigs, and we lost our release date. And oh. everything was just thrown up in the air. And I was wondering, you know, how should I release it early? Should I wait to see, wait this out and see if we can reschedule the release party? It was all very confusing. And, and finally, I just kind of like followed my heart and I released it on the day anyways, on May 7th without the poll party and everything. And um, I had released it a little bit earlier than that on Bandcamp. Uh, so that, that I could start to get money for, for me and my band because we had lost everything. So any kind of monetary in or any kind of income we could get at that time was going to be helpful. So I was like, I'm just going to release it early and see what we can get because we're all struggling. And this was before we had our stimulus checks and unemployment and we didn't know what was going on. So um, it was confusing, but it, it, it was, it was great. I was, I was, I was really excited to finally just, just get it out there. Cause you know, when you yeah. put that much work and energy into uh, something like that, which, you know, a lot of people have, it's, it's, it, it's so you just want to get it out. You don't even care about how people feel about it necessarily, or if you're going to make money off of it, you just want people to hear it. Look at all this work we did. Yeah. And um, I was so happy with it. It's a five song EP we recorded in uh, at Reseda Ranch Studios with Fernando Perdomo, who is in uh, Echo in the Canyon, that whole, um, I don't know if you saw Echo in the Canyon, that movie, but it's just such a brilliant movie about um, the Laurel Canyon days and everything. And he was in like the house band. And mm -hmm. so he has a studio up in LA and he's been a friend of mine for a very long time. And he's been wanting me to get in for a very long time. And so it was just perfect. I mean, we had this, let me just talk to you about the experience of making yeah. the album real quick. Yeah. It was just this, the most magical experience because we had scheduled a weekend up in LA to record this two days, five songs, just gonna bust it out. And there were seven of us up there. I rented an Airbnb for everybody, brought food so that we all could be fed throughout the days. And we just pushed through. And I mean, you would think that it would be really rushed, but everybody was so on point and we had done our homework and we did, you know, we had plenty of rehearsals beforehand. So we were really prepared going in yeah. and um, it was just this magical experience where everything just kind of fit together. And my producer was in, and Fernando's incredible just coming up with all these crazy ideas and I'm like you're a mad genius this is making me so happy yeah. and uh it was just this brilliant time in my life and then I was so excited for the release party and it was just gonna be a big deal and I had all this momentum going and publicity prepared and all this stuff and then nothing and then it was just like just shot down <laughs> so uh that was frustrating yeah oh my gosh well I know I was following um the social media posts 
going around when you were in the studio making the album and the whole um the group that you had all the musicians out there you could you could feel the enthusiasm and the excitement coming from everybody and just everybody raving after every session how amazing the album was going to be so i know everybody had like such big expectations for it and um yeah. i've heard it and you definitely delivered on it and i <laughs> That's, Thank I think you. that's got to be a, that's a common theme for you with me because I've been hearing your name in the you know musician community here for such a long time but just I you know mm. I hadn't caught anything of yours yet but then I had the opportunity to watch some of your live videos and you're just incredible I mean you're everything oh, that everybody always you know praises you for and acknowledges you Aww. for so I'm glad you got the songs out, you know. They're... Thank you. Thanks yeah. so much. You know, it's crazy because I we haven't been able to do any original shows. So we were yeah. waiting until this year. We were going to really push original shows and getting our music out. And maybe, you know, we had a whole tour planned. Oh um, I think you talked to Josh Taylor about this in your interview with, with Joshua Taylor because we were on this tour together. Um, and we had planned, you know, a month-long tour after Carissa's wedding. Krista Schroeder, who were, we yes. were supposed to be performing at her wedding, and then we were going to do this big long tour afterwards, and um, it was going to—I mean, it was going to be incredible. And she was supposed to be married in June, so that didn't happen. Although she did get married, yeah. you know, she had a little COVID wedding, which yes. is—we uh, were so excited for her. But um, everything got canceled, so I haven't been able to do one original show mm -hmm. yet, which is frustrating for me. So every show that I've got under my belt is all you know cover gigs it's just yeah. you know cover bands and um you know I'm in pink pink Freud as well um mm -hmm. the pink the pink Floyd tribute band in San Diego the big one and um yeah. and we were you know plan planning on eventually touring we were hoping it was going to be the end of this year but nothing you know nothing yeah. got put together and that was tough too it was just ah uh, so yes. disappointing I know everybody feels it. We're all going through the same thing. Yeah. Everybody has, I feel like everyone I've talked to has said 2020 was going to be my year. This was, we all had so much momentum. We were all just, everyone was doing so well. Yeah. And it was like, we were doing too well. And the, you know, everything. That is so true. Stopped. That's funny that you say that. <laughs> so I think that's yeah. so true. Yeah. I know huge, huge disappointments and um, you know, and I, the common thread that I'm hearing though, is, you know, every sudden one says, but you know, we're adapting, we're doing okay. And realizing kind of puts things in perspective. But when you had such a big thing going on, like putting, you know, essentially your first album out in all of this, all your plans, you know, changed on a dime mm -hmm. like this, in what ways did you pivot? Did you change the way you were going to promote the songs? Um, what, what were the first things that you did? So the original plan was to release a few singles before releasing the full EP. Mm -hmm. um, and it, I mean, I felt like I had the wind knocked out of me when everything got shut down and all the gigs started canceling. So it took me a, a while to even realize that I needed to pivot yeah. <laughs> and realize like, oh, oh, I got to do something else. And um, I I still have plans to, I mean, I haven't yet. I was going to release another single off of my album called Good Times Gone mm -hmm. because, and I felt like it was appropriate for the time we were going through. It's kind of a sad song yeah. just about wanting to like get up and leave town because things got hard, you know? And, um, but uh, right when I was starting to kind of put a video together, I was going to be kind of like a combination lyric video with some other video that I'd had some of the bandmates take of themselves playing the song. Um, but right when that all happened is when the Black Lives Matter movement happened, or, you know, the, the most current Black Lives Matter movement happened. Right. And, um, and I didn't feel like it was an appropriate time for me to promote myself or release anything or really work on anything and really just to like lift up those voices and, yeah. and make the focus on that. And so that's kind of the space I'm in still right now is kind of just wondering if this is the right time for me to promote myself or, um, you know, because in the end, that's what I'm doing. I'm promoting myself and my music and, and trying to do something with that. So it is kind of like this 
this I'm just waiting for the right time. I feel like I'll know when it ha- when it's there. I feel like I'll know when it's the right time. So yeah, I mean, so nuts. <laughs> yeah, it's super nuts. And yeah. so, like I said, you know, we just decided to, as far as that goes, we just decided to just release it, and then that's what it is. And um, I've been, you know, typing up emails for for uh, to send out my EPK to different publications and that sort of thing, so I can get some reviews under my belt. I think the Troubadour is reviewing it, and that should come out next month is my review so that'll be my first review (laughs) which is kind of like disappointing but a lot of that's my fault and not getting on top of things but um I really had to I mean right right now still I'm just it goes in waves of feeling really productive and wanting to get things done and then there's lulls where I'm like I can't do anything right now I can't I can't feel creative I can't put the work in that I know is needed the hustle that is needed in order to do this and now I feel like the hustle has to be like times five because there's all these new things we have to learn how to do like record from home and live stream and um you know pivot and figure out where's the next pathway and uh you know the one thing that I will say is really helped me is your interviews that you've been doing because it's, I'm getting an insight into like, okay, what are all my singer friends doing right now? Yeah. And I can figure out, um, you know, I could kind of pick like, okay, that might work for me and this might work for me. Um, so I'm, I'm interested in figuring out Twitch and I'm interested in figuring yeah. out um, how to do, uh, maybe get myself involved in, in, um, oh gosh, my brain, uh, uh, recording from home, you know, and, and being able to do a lot of that. I do have a few record from home projects that I'm working on right now that I need to get back on top of actually, (laughs) but, uh, you know, just figuring out what pathways work best for me. It's, it's been, I've had a lot of resistance to it, like a lot of resistance, but I, I can slowly feel that resistance coming down because in the end, this is my passion. This is what I want to do. And if this is what I have to do right now to get to where I want to be, then that's just, it's just one more of those obstacles that I have to overcome. Um, you know, it's just another year of being a struggling musician and it's just a different chapter, but it's not going to be forever. And I have to keep reminding myself of that. Eventually we will have, gigs again (laughs) yeah we we will and i'm glad that you said that about the interviews because the last thing in the world that i want anybody to receive from this is something we all commonly do which is we see what everybody else is doing and we take it personally and we get nervous that we're not doing enough or you know we get that comparison syndrome going but what i really want everybody to be taking away from this is just to see that um there is a lot of things going on, a lot of different things that we wouldn't ordinarily see in our, you know, in, in our lives when we're gigging and everything. And just to be reassured that there are options available right now. There are things that you can be doing, but I also hope that everybody sees in these conversations, the commonality with all of us, which is we're all in the same boat. We're all having to, you know, change directions and, um, we, we are all kind of going through the same emotions over everything and that, um, you know, a lot of us feel the same where it's some days, you know, you can't do anything and other than just sit in it, <laughs> you know, there's just yeah to do to sit in And, it. you know, I kind of want to like normalize that, you know, that is something kind of what, it, not normalize, but like kind of, oh, sorry, puppies. Um, I just, I just want to it's okay to sit in it and, and to just think about what you want to do right now and really take your time with it. And it's okay to not be productive. So many of us, so many musicians are very type A personality of just, if they don't have 20 things going on at one time, Mm -hmm. then they don't feel productive. I'm not one of those people like at all. And I know quite a few other people who aren't in that boat. And it's just like, it's, it's almost too much to have one thing going on sometimes. Um, But over the last few years, I've realized 
as a professional musician, you have to have your finger in quite a few different honey pots in order to get the amount of honey that you need to survive right. as a musician. Yeah. And so you can't just do one thing. You can't. And I, I mean, I tried doing that for a while, but that doesn't work. And um, so having your finger in a few different things is important. And I'm realizing now um, that I need to have my finger in at least a few things that are pandemic proof, you know, so right. that moving forward, if this ever happens again, or if we're, you know, if like, let's say it blows over in the next year and then three years down the line, we have another pandemic. I want to be able to say, okay, well, I know what I'm doing for work at, as far as that goes. Yeah. Well, it's certainly building up our resiliency, I think, you know, totally. <laughs> so we won't be as caught off guard next time, but, um, yeah, you know, it's, I think you meant you, you've mentioned something important before, um, about, uh, having to, you know, change your touring plans and, um, you know, not really knowing what to do to pivot right away. But, um, you know, again, I think everybody was kind of caught in that position and we all had that, you know, what do I do now? And, and, um, but I've, you know, I think as, as long as this has gone on, I've kind of learn to relax a little bit and just know that, you know, it's totally out of our control. It's going to be, it's going to yeah. pass when it's going to pass and there's nothing we can really do about it, but right. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, let's back up a little bit and tell me about, um, your writing process, uh, for the songs and what brought it on, what motivated you to, um, put it all together and where, where did the songs come from? So um, th three of the songs on my album, I wrote actually when I was like 20 years old, like really like a long time ago. And so I've been sitting on them for quite, quite a few many years. <laughs> and um, they're songs that I've tried to work out in other projects, but it never really like clicked in a way where I was like, yes, that's my song. And um, uh, when I started playing with the low, when I, when we created the low keys, and um, started playing with its members, which is uh, Tony Conum, Harley Maxino, uh, <clears throat> Josh Taylor, uh, Sam Hunt, and um, I know I'm forgetting some. Oh, Joshua Weinstein. <laughs> He's gonna be so mad. <laughs> Joshua Weinstein. He's like, and uh, I didn't forget him though. <laughs> so <laughs> it's okay. Joshua Weinstein and um and I had Sandy on uh, Sandy King on back backups from King Taylor Project, which is Joshua Taylor and Sandy King. Mm -hmm. Um and uh so they were doing backup vocals and Josh Taylor was on the album. But um when I started playing with these guys regularly, I was just we found a sound very quickly of what we liked to sound like. And I realized these guys could do serious things with my music if they were interested and I asked they they were all for it which was you know just the best day of my life when I was like let's make an EP and they're like yeah let's do it mm, yeah. and um you know I put them all as co-producers on the album because they put so much time and work into helping me with um arrangements and um just make getting the right sound for every song that I wanted um, just getting it right and they put so much homework into it uh, you know and and really just make it you, you can clearly hear everybody's style mm -hmm. on my album but when it came together it was just like this just perfect sound that I thought like it was what was inside of me and I was just like ah it's out this is great um, so I mean I I wrote these songs and then I rewrote them essentially with the band mm -hmm. um, and there's two new ones. And the one that I did the single on my birthday, it's called Burned by Bridges. And I co-wrote that with Josh Weinstein. And um, that, was, that was a fun experience doing that music video. I think you said you saw my video. Yes, I did. Huh? <laughs> and that was, <laughs> I mean, I don't, I just had an idea one night at a gig where I was like, I'm going to get my body painted for my music video. And that's what I want. And I, didn't realize that it would be timed around the time when I was having surgery. So mm -hmm. I had made, well, not major surgery. It was a really minor surgery actually, but I got, I got my tube snipped off. <laughs> no more babies for me. <laughs> and I had, a, I had about a week of recovery time before we were going to shoot this video. And I was like, ah, oh, I'm going to have all my scars and I'm going to be bloated. But then I was thinking, you know what? 
it's okay. Cause that's kind of the point of the video I wanted to make is like just this really body positive, um, but being supported by your friends and, and just putting it all out there. Like, just as long as you have the support of your friends, you're going to be okay. And, you know, having people just love you for who you are. So showing my scars and showing my body, my mm -hmm full naked body <laughs> in this video <laughs> that's only covered by paint was just it was a that whole day was really emotional for me uh, it was a lot more emotional than I thought it was going to be but at the end of the day I kind of broke down and I cried a couple times and um, I was exhausted from standing up for I mean it took us 12 like almost 12 hours to yeah. shoot the whole thing and get everything that we wanted and I edited it all together myself which was a whole other oh, thing that I yeah. was wasn't expecting to do but I was I was hap happy to do it and it was exciting for me and it was my first time doing something like that so it's not like the best video but it's it's mine and it's my first and I'm really proud of it yeah oh I thought it was so great I think it I really think it landed the impact that you wanted it to. Cause that's really how I received it too. Yeah. Just the way you described it. Um, oh, just, thanks. you know, kind of getting out there and being vulnerable and, um, yeah. you looked amazing and, you know, just, I think it really, it really delivered what you wanted. It was great. Really, really great. Um, Thank you. Yeah. You know, I, I had this whole idea before everything shut down. I want it, you know, the tagline in it is that bitch is me. You know, yeah. that's, that's the end of the chorus is that bitch is me. And that was a big deal for me to like, say a, a curse word on a, on my album. But it was also like, I couldn't think of any other word that I wanted there. It was just, mm -hmm. that's what I wanted. And I had this idea that I was going to like print out like pins and stickers that say that bitch is me. Cause I really wanted to have this kind of like embody positive movement of it, but also just like owning yourself and your mistakes and just people being able to say that and sing along with the uh, the track and be like that bitch is me you know just getting into it I had that image in my head and so maybe someday that'll happen at a show I'm really hoping to have yeah. an original show where I have stuff and people are into it and singing along with it and you know the response I've gotten has been really great really great mm -hmm. so far you know which is just such a blessing yeah yeah you know what, that, that reminds me, I, I had a point earlier that I was going to make, but I totally forgot. Um, but just talking about how, you know, you had these plans to do the tour to support the album didn't yeah. happen because of COVID. Then yeah. you have this opportunity to promote it um, online, but then Black Lives Matter movement hit and, you know, rightly so, you know, we turned our attention towards that it, it just was not the time to be you know self-promoting and everything then and, and then backing up even further you doing your video unexpectedly having this surgery before it it's like we lay these plans and it's like the universe is yeah. just like no I'm sorry doesn't care it's, yeah no <laughs> it's not gonna happen <laughs> and my gosh it's like more no. more than ever we're really having to reconcile the fact that there's so so little in this life that we have any control over and you just gotta you just gotta roll with it you it's know true. and and I'm sure it's a few years from now we'll look back on this and be like I I can see why things unfolded the way they did now but it's hard to see it <laughs> right this minute. it's so hard to see right now it's so yeah. hard you know yeah. I feel like since October you know I've had just a last October, I've had like a serious traumatic challenge happen almost every other week mm -hmm. is what it felt like since then. So I felt like I was in trauma mode even before COVID hit. Mm -hmm. You know, I went through a really hard breakup. You know, I broke up with my, my boyfriend of five years and that was very difficult, especially when you have a kid. It's just, there's so many dynamics to that that are just that in itself is difficult to deal with. Um, I had a roommate move in, Chloe Lou, who won last night. Yeah, just real quick, yay. she won Best Pop Album for her Pop Album Storybook, which you can find on Spotify. Anyway, um, she moved in, so that's a whole thing. Moving in is a whole thing, and moving him out was a whole thing. And then I had my surgery within a week of that, and then I had to have three. Wait, I had one surgery and then two emergency surgeries after that within the week of that. And then I had my video and it was just like one thing after another, it was just ridiculous. And then COVID hit and I was like, eh. 
it's just, of course, like it's, yeah. when's it going to end? But, you know, I have a really good community. I have really, really good friends. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Josh Taylor talked about, about it in your interview about how he has his tribe and he is a part of my tribe. And we have this, this group within the larger musical community and they're just, they're like my brothers and sisters and we help each other through everything. And we, we get, we get it, you know, we get each other and um, without those people and um, honestly, the support of my family helping me through uh, everything from the, since last October, without all of that, I don't think, I don't, I don't think I'd be able to smile right now yeah. <laughs> or have a smile on my face, you know? So some days I just have to be grateful that I can smile and that's yeah. what I have. Yeah. 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 I know. Well, I think you're right. It, we're fortunate in the music community that it's not, it's like co having coworkers, but then it's not because you, you're, you're on a fully, a, a whole different level of intimacy with your bandmates. It is, it's like this yeah. brotherly and sisterly love. And I mean, we're so, we're so fortunate to be able to experience that in our careers and get to be with these people all the time who, you know, you do, you make your family with them and it's absolutely, um, yeah, it would be tough getting through times like this without them. And speaking yeah. of them, we have friends that are, uh, saying hi Yay. online. Um, we've got Jake Nager out there Aww. and Melissa's hi, out there. Shannon Coates, she's up in Canada, and oh. Bobby Cressy. And, Hi, Bobby. Yeah, Nikki Lynn Ross. And if I'm for, if I'm missing anybody, it's because I'm really bad about going back and forth between the comments. I'm trying to figure that whole thing out. So please forgive me and be patient. I'll I'll try to see your name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Yes, that's cool. We got all these people in here. Yeah. So. All right. So here we are. You've got the songs out now. Um, you know, the plan has changed and everything. I'm curious to know, let's just say it's, it's day one for someone walking in or deciding, you know, maybe they've just graduated high school or something or, you know, in college or whatever. It's totally okay. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I knew this was gonna happen. I was telling you, I'm surprised. Like one of my kids has not like come through the it's, door and like run across the room naked while I'm doing oh, this. So fine. Fine. it's fine. Yeah, my kid is is out right now, and he's supposed to come back at seven. So I'm like, just come back, please, just like seven fifteen. But yeah, good. my dog likes to bark at everything. Oh, look at you. <laughs> his portraits yeah right oh yeah there. how cute you can see it i love yeah. that um <laughs> yeah so anyway so, yeah you're starting out yeah let's just say you're you're stepping in to um the music industry right now let's just say you had your sight set on it and this 2020 was gonna be your year Ugh. to like get your Ugh. stuff going Maybe you're not even, you know, immersed in the community yet. You haven't networked or really met anybody yet. Uh, you haven't gigged yet. I mean, where do you think, where would you start? What is the first thing you would do? If oh, you that's such a good question. Going? That's such a good question about if you were starting now instead of just in normal times, because I have so many ideas for people <laughs> And things that I did, you know, to get into it. Yeah. But um, but if now, it is not a good time. <laughs> but, okay, so if I was, like, determined and I'm going to start and I'm going to start, I mean, you have to start networking as soon as possible. I think yeah. people underestimate how, what a big component that is mm -hmm. in in being successful. And it's something that I put off doing not put off, but like just was not as enthusiastic as at doing when I first started just because I was already, I was feeling really, um, I guess insecure is the right, I wasn't totally sure of myself, of what my sound was, of what kind of singer I was and that sort of thing. So taking my time to find my people took a while. Um, but right now, you know, it's going to sound like kind of lame, but adding people on Facebook that you see are friends with other people that you know are musicians, you know, mm -hmm. and just, just kind of building up your network online. Um, you know, there's oftentimes people I've heard about, like I have a lot of friends on Facebook that I've heard about, but I haven't actually met in person. 
So when I actually do meet them in person, it's just this like great thing. Cause I already know a little bit about them and their music and what they do and mm-hmm. you know, how, how maybe I, m- me or myself or my music or my skills can fit in with theirs. So, um, and how we can help each other essentially. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so just building up your online networking thing, I think is, is a good place to start. Um, there are a bunch of groups on Facebook and Instagram or mostly Facebook for local singers, um, local singers, local musicians. Mm -hmm. So being a, being a part of those groups and participating, actually participating in, in the group, not just like slumming in the back. If you have questions, ask them, you know, that (laughs) it's actually like a great place to ask questions because, you know, there's very little, you you know, the rejection factor isn't so harsh, you know, Mm -hmm. or you're not so afraid to ask somebody that maybe, you know, because they're busy playing or like you just went to their show and you don't want to bug them or, you know, they're breaking down their equipment or something, but online you just ask and then you wait for an answer. And it's just, it's a lot, I think that's a lot easier, (laughs) honestly. Um, You know, if there's one person, you know, in town who's doing this professionally, like calling them, asking them, what are they doing right now? How are they doing it? And and you know like actually having conversations with people Mm -hmm. like one-on-one conversations um I feel like I'm blowing it on this question just because that is Mm -mm. that's a hard though I fully agree with you I think that that and I really think that kind of just speaks to how our world is just working in general right now I mean lots of things that were ordinarily more like in person socially are more happening online right now. And I mean, it's, it's a weird transition to make, but I think that, you know, Mm -hmm. the very young generation coming up with them that it's perfectly normal. I mean, people are like meeting online and getting married. So to meet musician (laughs) friends is, you know, probably not that big of a deal. And in a way, you know, it is, it can be so intimidating to walk into a music scene and just try to plug yourself in or, or, you know, it's it's absolutely, it's tough putting yourself out there, but this may even be a softer way of doing it. Just sure. You know, liking people on social media and just watching them and supporting Mm -hmm. the things that they're doing and just kind of taking a few cues and, um, absolutely just little by little, you know, maybe popping up on the radar a little bit, but I, I honestly, I agree. I think that would be the best place to start. I mean, I feel really blessed, like just going back to like just watching people, you know, I I grew up in a really, really musical family um, with, you know, two, two pretty big uh, influences in my life, my father and my, and my, my aunt Eve, Eve Mm Sellis, and being able to watch them and their careers as, you know, since I was born, basically, and, Mm -hmm. and absorbing all of that before I decided to do it for myself. And, um, I feel like I waited way too long to do it for myself, but I, you know, I had, I had a career and I had all these things that I was doing before. And I had my son, which was, was another, as you, as we both know, (laughs) takes a lot of your attention, (laughs) a lot of your attention. And, uh, so, you know, it was, it was, it was hard for me to like justify adding music into my life. Um, and then it just got to a point where I was like, I don't care. Like I have to do this. Like, it's like, I just, I couldn't not do it anymore. And, um, you know, when I got back into the music scene, it was about six years, seven, almost seven years ago. And, um, and, uh, I, uh, was writing music. It was original when I first got into the, into the music scene, we were writing, I was writing music with, uh, with, with, um, Gary Gary Kreit Jr. and he and I wrote a bunch of songs together and put a little band together and uh, we had a year of of playing our original stuff and that was how I, I kind of got introduced into the San Diego music scene again um, or to that side of it anyways because I was very familiar with most of the people who were doing cover and tribute gigs just because that's the world that my aunt lived in for so long mm-hmm. um, and those were the musicians I knew uh, growing up and my dad the same you know tribute and cover bands traveling the world with these people and Mm -hmm. and so I got to know some of like the big heavy hitter uh musicians in San Diego since I was a little girl which is Mm -hmm. just I'm just you know I'm really grateful for that now because I feel like I skipped a bunch of chapters and then I could just kind of move forward in in figuring certain things out Mm -hmm. you know certain things like how a singer should act on a gig oh (laughs) 
<laughs> you know, things that, that you have to learn the hard way when you don't have, when you're not exposed to that constantly. Yeah. Um, you know, I didn't have to learn those hard lessons, which I'm really grateful for because, you know, I've heard, <laughs> I mean, not to throw my dad under the bus, but growing up, I heard him complain about singers an awful lot, <laughs> mm -hmm. like a lot, um, because he's, he's a guitar player. He's brilliant. Like my dad's probably like, if I, I know it sounds biased, but he's the best guitar player in San Diego, according to a lot of people and not yeah. just me, but he, um, he would come home from like a rehearsal or something and just be like, ah, oh, fucking singers. Like they don't yes. pack up their stuff and they leave. And I had to be there for like two hours afterwards, you know, just like grumbling, but I absorbed that stuff. And I was like, Oh, don't be like that, you know, yeah. or pack, always pack up your own stuff, bring your own things, help unload, help load in, yeah. you know, all the things that just keep everybody happy. Don't be a douche. <laughs> don't be a douche. Yeah. very simple <laughs> very simple but you'd be surprised like because I've run into singers like that and I'm like what are you what are yeah. you doing yeah. you know what are you doing yeah, and you're, you're fortunate to have kind of picked up those soft skills earlier because sometimes <laughs> that is the that is the hardest thing um, yeah. it's hard to unlearn habits like that but you know, they are, they're tough lessons, but yeah. really important. That's that definitely not saying that I haven't like left early from a gig, but it's usually because oh, either I have my, I have a babysitter or I have to get up really early the next day and I'm done and that you guys handle it. Are you guys good? Like it's everybody. And I check in with everybody before I leave, you know, just the little mm -hmm. things, but, yeah. um, but it's definitely, you know, just something that you have to think about as if you're, if your only job is to sing, you need to to not just only do your job well, but you, you need to have those soft skills, like you said, of, mm -hmm. of, of just being a decent person because yes. you have the least gear responsibilities. But, you know, I, I, uh, you know, I do, I share, I share a PA because, you know, budget and I share, well, but I share, I share a PA with Sam Hunt. And when he leaves for a the summer, shared PA. Yeah. <laughs> he, he usually leaves for the summer out every summer for three months. And then I, take his PA and, and I use it for gigs and, um, I hold on to it for him. And so it's not to say that I don't have gear, you know, a lot of singers, mm -hmm. uh, are band leaders and band leaders are usually responsible for bringing sound equipment and, you mm -hmm. know, or traditionally not, I shouldn't say usually, cause that's not in every case, but mm -hmm. in a lot of cases I've seen, you know, band leaders are responsible for PA situation and, and, and loading that in and bringing it up. So, you know, that's your responsibility or it should be anyway. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Yeah. Um, I know I, I posted something the other day about like, uh, our singers being notoriously, you know, late for everything. And I know that's not the case with everybody. <laughs> yeah, but, I saw that, <laughs> but the, uh, you know, the stereotype there is there probably for a good reason, but there yeah. are, there's just so many of those things where, you know, sometimes just being a great singer, um, just isn't enough, unfortunately, because there's a lot of great singers out there, but, oh yeah, you know, and in San Diego, we have so many good singers here. There's so many great musicians. It's an incredible <sighs> community. It is. And, you know, and just like you mentioned, you, you're coming from a very magical family and that is yeah. so, so fortunate. Um, besides coming from that family, what kind of uh, musical training did you do um kind of coming into this? yeah so not much I'll tell you that yeah. much but well okay so I had I had lessons here and there when I was a kid mm -hmm. um and you know I was obsessed with watching my aunt when I was younger when I was like a little girl I wanted to be at every show I wanted to watch her I, I was just obsessed with watching her perform and um I I paid a lot of attention to what she was doing uh, vocally. I've, I've listened in on, on her warming up before every show and paying attention to that and, and just kind of absorbing those skills. But um, the most training that I've had, like official training I've had is uh, when I went to uh, college at, at Cal State Fullerton, I was a musical theater major. And so we had a ton of training, a ton of vocal training, and um, in those two years that I was there, because I ended up leaving and changing my major, I was very confused, uh, 20 year old. <laughs> I mean, so Many very confused. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't know what the hell I was doing. Um, but I, uh, 
I did get some really valuable training um, and, uh, when I was in college. And then um, when I, so then I didn't, I didn't really do anything much after that. I got pregnant at 24, um, had my child at 25. And then I, uh, when I got back into doing music, it was, I had went on Craigslist and just was seeing what was there. And I, uh, I saw that this girl, her name's Vanya James, she's a local, local singer yeah. and songwriter. I don't know if you know Vanya, but she, um, she was looking for a backup vocalist for her band. And I sent her some, some of my singing clips or whatever through my space at the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Cause that's how you did it. And, yeah. uh, um, and she loved what I had. And so we got together, we did, we did a bunch of shows together and uh, recorded on, on one of her albums with her and, and we were planning on going on tour and then I got pregnant. So that didn't happen. But, um, so I, I like mixed up the timeline, but that was my first getting in. And then I stopped when I got pregnant. And then I, after three years, I don't know something, I don't know if you had this experience, but at three, something happens at three years old, where as a parent, you're like, I need me back. I need, I need a different hat than just mom because being mom for three years straight is I'm not happy. Like, and I need to be happy so you can be happy. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, it, it was just this fire in me of like, I know what I need to be happy and it's music and I need to get back into it. And so that's mm -hmm. when I started doing that again, but because I was just doing original songs that I was writing to suit my voice, um, and for what my range was at the time, I didn't have to challenge myself very much and I wasn't singing that often. So mm -hmm. it just didn't kind of, and I was still having, you know, my daytime career. So I didn't have to like just try that much. So what, when I really came clear that I need better technique was when I started doing cover gigs mm -hmm. and I was doing them, you know, four or five times a week for four hours, right. four hour shows, you yeah. know, that I was losing my voice constantly and I couldn't figure out why. And mm -hmm. I was stressing because that had become my only source of income at the yeah. time. And so as a singer, when you lose your voice, that's just, you don't have a job. Like you're like, you're out of a job. As soon yeah. as your voice is gone, this is your, this is everything. So so I actually asked my aunt Eve Sellis for some refresher courses because she teaches voice as well. And I, and about, you know, once a year, I'll go to my aunt and I'll just, I'll tighten up and I'll get, I'll get out of bad habits that I've picked up. And she just like adjusted, you know, just drew my attention to certain things. Mm -hmm. And it was just like overnight, I was able to like last four hours, no problem, you know? And so it was just uh, a wake up call for me for sure. And that's mm -hmm. not to say that I haven't had other vocal issues in the past I feel like I've had everything wrong that a singer could have and I'm yeah. sure you have too yeah. and you just learn how to sing through it sing around it like figure it out make it part of your sound you know <laughs> just yeah. that's how I sound tonight tonight I sound like a you know a blues singer that's been smoking for eight you know <laughs> 80 years that's what yeah. I sound like tonight it's strange because now that I haven't been singing as often as I was which was like four or five times a week for, mm -hmm. you know, from two to four hours at a time. It was, I've noticed like, I have almost no rasp anymore. Mm -hmm. And I thought that the rasp was just like a part of me. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, that's just from wear and tear. And I'm like, oh my gosh, yeah, it's crazy. It is. I know it's, it's. I think it's kind of a double-edged sword. It's like you get the vocal rest, but at the same time, I like being conditioned well as a singer, which is, you know, you know, you're really yeah. exercising your voice a lot, yeah. but, um, but yeah, I mean, doing the cover scene thing is, it is really grueling on, you know, the voice and can yeah. really. That's can something that out. people need to consider if that's mm -hmm. something that they're wanting to get into yeah. or that they're wanting to do. Um, just consider that you might have to adjust your technique in order to last because mm -hmm. for, you know, it's just, I wouldn't just be having, you know, one four hour gig. I'd have like three, three hour gigs in one day, you know, and yeah. that's my own fault for scheduling that way. But, you know, sometimes you're just in a mode or the finances say you can't say no, mm -hmm. you know? So if you can, if you can, if your timetable tells you that you can make it to that gig, <laughs> 
then you're going to do it. Yeah. And, um, but there are consequences. So it is something to think about. If it's something that people want to get into, it's like, you really need to make sure your technique's good. Don't just think that just because you're a good singer, you're going to make it through. That's mm -hmm. just not going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. And I think on, on top of um, the training issue, you're going to hear mixed opinions on this across the board. Um, you know, one person will say, oh, it's, it's absolutely critical that you um, go to college and that you get your, you know, your music education that way. Um, and if you have the opportunity and means to do that, that's awesome. You know, I mean, that, absolutely. that's amazing. And, and yeah. I would never, I mean, I, I would fully, fully back that, but at the yeah. same time, um, if that's not a possibility for you and you have, you know, an opportunity to, you know, sit at the feet of someone like, you know, Eve Sellis and watch yeah. her career and then also be trained by her, you know, that that can be enough if not more than enough um you know you just i think you have to keep your eyes open for mm -hmm. people like that in your life identifying you know mentors and just people you know that you can reach out to that can help you a little bit because um, yeah that'll lead you to someone else and just you know being willing to um be teachable yeah, really respect the people that are, you know, have more experience than you do. Um, that obviously really served you really, really well, <laughs> you know? So yeah. I, I think that, uh, I don't think people should feel, um, bad, you know, <laughs> if college isn't a thing that's going to work out. No, for them. not at all. I mean, I will say, sorry, my, every time it's, okay. <laughs> it's fine. It's my dog. It's my dog. It's fine. Chloe. <laughs> Chloe's here. Chloe Lou. San Diego. Hey, Chloe, congratulations. <laughs> she says, congratulations. <laughs> um, what was I going to say? Oh, uh, I will say though, like what everything that you just said is true. Like college is not for everybody and it's also not necessary for everybody, but I have grown to know that your value as a singer and what you will be worth as a singer increases so much if you can read music or understand theory yeah. so it has become my my coronavirus mission uh to i started taking guitar lessons mm -hmm. um even though i've been able to play a little bit my whole life but not not be able to accompany myself mm -hmm. and i can have a conversation in theory about the songs or like, or anything, you know, if you have a sub in your band and you want to, you want to be able to be the person to say like, go to the four or whatever, and know what that means. Yes. That is my goal at that by, you know, the end of this pandemic, if it ever comes, uh, that I will have a, at least a rudimentary understanding of theory enough to help me in society to, to be a better band leader and, um, to be able to communicate better. And I think that that's also going to offer me other opportunities um, that were normally would normally be close to me because I couldn't um, understand it. And so I'm kind of coming around. I just, I bought my circle of fifths poster and I put it on my front door. So I see it every day and I practice a little bit every day. Josh Taylor's actually the one giving me lessons right now. And um, he is goodness gracious dog. Uh, so he, he's been fantastic too. So highly recommended if anybody wants uh, guitar lessons or even just theory lessons, he'd be yeah. like a great teacher. Cause he, he's very helpful in breaking it down. And people have been very um, supportive, like Bobby Cressy and some other people being like, if you need any help, let me know. And I'm yeah. like, I'm probably going to call you because <laughs> yeah. I need help. This yeah. is confusing. That's a, I'm glad you clarified that. And I, I fully am behind you on that as well, where yeah. if it's not college, it's, it does have to be something. So something. whether that's, you know, uh, I mean, I think any singer in the business now, or that's been in it for some time is going to tell you if, if you can learn to play piano, learn to yeah. play guitar or learn to Do read, it. learn, that theory. would be great advice for somebody starting out right now. Like yes. don't even start with music. Don't even start with singing or, or gigs, yeah. start with an instrument, yeah. figure it out. Like yeah. that, this is the perfect time to do that because that will make you invaluable later. Yeah. It will. Yeah. And, and again, reach out to the people that are around you. If, if your next yeah. door neighbor, old lady plays piano or whatever, hit her up, <laughs> see right. what, what you guys could do together. But, um, and if you don't have a ton of people who, um, you know, are, uh, real seasoned musicians, mm -hmm. 
everything you need to know is online and you know, it, it shouldn't be your yeah. end means, but it's we a good start. It's a yeah. Good start. We live in such incredible times where yeah. literally anything you want to know how to do, you can fix, you can find out like through YouTube yeah. or Google, like that's seriously it. That's all you need <laughs> mm-hmm. and determination, you know, right. to figure it out. Um, it's funny. Like I was thinking when you were talking about, you know, use those people, you know, I, I, I was so adamant about not using my dad or my aunt to get ahead, so to speak, that it was costing me gigs. And I had talked to my aunt about it after a couple of years of me just being like, I'm just stuck. Like I can't, I can't move any forward. I just kind of plateaued and I didn't know what I needed to be doing. And she's like, well, are you telling these people that you're my niece? And mm-hmm. I'm like, no, because I don't want to I kind of just want to do it on my own and ha- be you know, figure it out on my own right, make my own mistakes. But she's like, what good is it that I have done all this work and know all these people and have these connections and am this person for you not to use it? And I'm like, ah, I like, I didn't think of it that way. I just, I was very stubborn, but honestly getting out of that mindset and being like, not looking at it as like you're using people, but you're working together with people who believe in you and your talent. Like Mm -hmm. that is, super important you know if my aunt legitimately didn't think that I couldn't do this she would be like please don't tell me <laughs> right you know she'd be honest she'd be honest with me which don't is me <laughs> right or she'd just have a conversation of like you know maybe this isn't for you or something but um she fully believed that I could do this and that I deserved it and she's given me a lot of opportunities. She's the whole reason I got to go on tour last year in Canada with Pink Floyd opening up for Foreigner. It was like the biggest deal of my life. Yeah. I got to go on a legit tour with the tour bus and it's fancy and a tour mm-hmm. manager and stadiums and all this stuff that I miss so much. But I got to do that because my aunt recommended me over her yeah. for a gig. And it was like, I got to audition and then I got the, you know, I, I had to audition. It wasn't like they just gave it to me, but I got it. And it was just, holy crap. And if I had still stuck to my guns of like, no, I wouldn't have never have had that opportunity. So don't be afraid. I I hate the word like using people, but that's what networking, not using, but like networking, it means just that so that you have that number that you can call of like, oh, I know somebody who does that. Or I know somebody who needs that. Or um, I'm going to check in with this person to see if they still need anything you know that I can do for them or um and oftentimes they are so happy that you've called them or they're just you know so just getting over that fear of picking up the phone or asking for things Mm -hmm. is really important because I'm I'm just kind of going on a tangent now but I'm just gonna roll with it yeah (laughs) so uh-oh I think we're losing Lauren. Ask what you want. Oh, am I, am I cutting out? Oh no. Yeah, you're there. You're there. Am I back? <laughs> we lost your okay. point. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So one, one very valuable thing that I've learned as a singer is that you need to ask for what you want. Yeah. Ask for what you want. Mm-hmm. The worst that can happen is you don't get it. And then you figure out another way to get what you want. But if you don't put it out there, if you don't ask for it, then it's a definite no. It's a definite no. So that's just, I mean, I've heard that my whole life, but never really applied it to anything. And once I started applying that to my music career, I was like, oh gosh, like there's so many things I should have asked for before Mm -hmm. (laughs) because you just, you get them, you know, Mm -hmm. or eventually you get them or like, you might not get the one thing, but you might get this other thing. And then that'll lead to something you didn't even know you wanted. So it's, uh, just asking for things is really important. It is. Yeah. And I think, I think even backing up to, um, you know, talking about not wanting to, you know, name drop your family or anything. I think that just speaks a lot to, you know, your integrity and the type of person you are, but you know, I mean, you kind of, you get past those things and, and you realize that it is, it is a difficult business to, to get into. And you really should take every advantage that you have available to you Yeah, and you getting such um, a big audition you know, um, may or may not have been, you know, because of who you were connected to, but you earned the job. Yeah. You were fully worthy of that. And, and I, I can't think (laughs) of a lot of musicians that are ultimately going to hire someone for a gig that isn't 
really the best fit for it, you know? Right. And, and I think um, mentioning, I mean, you don't want to be an obnoxious name dropper or anything like that, but just um, pointing out those friendly connections yeah. isn't such a bad idea because I think musicians are such a um, loyal bunch of people. You know, we love our fellow musicians and our friends and in yes. our circles that it's like, it's like a pleasure to be able to make those connections and give an opportunity to someone who, it's you know. It's so you know. awesome. I love doing that. That's one of my yes. favorite things about it is like connecting these two people who are like, they need each other and they don't even know that it's like a matchmaker like <laughs> that kind of like oh I love that I've given you this opportunity or something and or not that I've given it to you but like oh I saw a space where you might fit in you know and just being really excited for people that's something I love about the music scene in San Diego is we're all so supportive of each other it's yeah. unlike any other music city that I've experienced. Yeah. I don't know about Nashville. I mean, I I, I want to go so bad, but now I can't. Um, but I I really love it. In in San Diego, there's just nothing like it where it's just we all love each other very much and we want to see each other succeed. It's not like we're on competition. It's like we're all just kind of rooting for each other. Yeah. And it's great. Even when I was auditioning for that tour, I was running up against Carissa and Whitney Shea. And so like honestly when I heard Carissa when I heard that these two were auditioning I was like well that's it I'm not gonna get it because <laughs> they're just so good and just these huge huge voices and, and I was just like I, I can't compete with that and I've never done anything to their level that they've done and at up to this point and I was wow oh, I was just ruined I'm oh, not ruined but I was just oh, I was tore up about it but also really wanted one of us to get it like at the yeah. same time that's just that support of like oh god I really hope one of us gets it it's not some random person in LA that we don't know. <laughs> or right. just you know this other person that sent in a video that's from another state so I was just like I really 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 hope one of us gets it and when I got it they were so supportive of me and I was just like I was worried I'm, I'm not going to be you know I'm not going to beat around that bush that I was worried about how they were going to react and um I found come to find out that Whitney never even put her submission in and then uh, Carissa yeah. worked so hard on it and she's such a beautiful soul and I'm I, I didn't ever get to, to hear it but I'm sure it was freaking gorgeous and mm -hmm. um I know she put her heart and soul into that so for her to like be so happy for me was like I just love you so much just this bond that doesn't really go away you yeah. know yeah, I, f I feel that sentiment too. Um, and I was just noticing in the uh, comments, Michael Gein is out there. And um, well, first of all, he says, I've never met Lauren, but I'm a big fan of her voice, incredible tone. So, so true. But he also pointed out that um, San Diego music community is such a tight knit family. We're all here for each other. Um, and that, I mean, it really is so true. And you know, obviously there is so some true. element of um, competition. I mean, we are in a business, right? And we're trying to make money, but that is, that's a real small piece of it. Yeah. I think in the long run, and this, this just might be just a, maybe a level of life maturity that you reach. Um, you've got to come to a place where you realize that there's plenty of work for everybody, you know, oh, yeah. and um you're gonna, you're gonna get those gigs, uh, for one reason or another. And you gotta, um, you just gotta be rooting for people and yeah. know, let them live their journey. You live yours. The cards are gonna, um, you know, uh, what's the, I don't know what the card Turn saying is, but flip your, your cards, cards are going to flip out on the table for you <laughs> as they, you know, you're going to be dealt a hand in life. But yeah. I mean, you know, things are going to unfold the way that they will. And you, I think you're just, you'll be doing yourself a favor just to um, embrace the people that are in your community, really, really root for them genuinely. Yeah. And, um, and I think you'll find that um, you're going to have, they're going to reciprocate that to yeah. you. And it just, it makes your career so much funner, less stressful, less, um, it, it will negate a lot of insecurities yeah. that you may have had. And um, it definitely know, makes it feel like it's less of a job and more of a hang. Yeah. And, and uh, yeah, it just, it's so important. It's so yeah. important to support other people and not, not to be catty or anything like that, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So true. 
Well, so um, I, I could talk to you forever. I say that to everybody, I mean, but it really just goes to speak again that we do live in such an incredible um, music community. And yeah. um, just like you, you know, we're thinking of all the singers, all the musicians out there right now. My heart definitely goes out to everybody. And um, I hope that just these little talks are some encouragement to you. And, yeah. um, you know, if you're sitting out there and you want to come on and be interviewed, just contact me. On do the it. Socials and, I, and I'd love to do that. But um, it, you know, just like Mike said, we, you and I haven't met in person either, but um, I hear about you all the time. Everybody is always raving about you and that's crazy. everything that I have seen and heard from you completely lives up to that. So oh, that's it's, so nice. It's, it's such a pleasure to get to talk to you and I hope we'll do this again and of yeah. we'll stay in contact behind the scenes, but um, tell everybody where they can find you online. So uh, my website is laurenleemusic.com. So it's L-A-U-R-E-N-L-E-I-G-H music.com. And um, if it's not up there now, it should be there by the end of the day, some links to my music and where you can find it. But otherwise, all my music's on Spotify, iTunes, and, you know, Amazon, wherever you get your music from. You just look up Lauren Lee. My album's called Flare. And uh, you can, you know, uh, uh, yeah, so that's where you can find me. Coming up, I have... A live stream uh, next Saturday. Uh, next Saturday at five o'clock, I think we're doing a Marty Robbins tribute uh, with Sam Hunt and Nick Crook. And Nick Crook will be playing the part of Marty Robbins. And uh, I'm very excited because I've been missing doing harmonies. And there's so many really rich harmonies. That's something I really miss right now yeah. is, doing, is singing with other singers. It's just, mm -hmm. oh, it hurts. But, um, yeah, so we'll be doing that live stream on uh, next Saturday. And so I'll be posting a bunch of stuff about that, promoting it um, coming up here pretty soon. And uh, hopefully the low keys are going to be doing a live stream soon. We had to cancel on 4th of July, um, but we will be doing a live stream soon. a socially distanced live stream, uh, making sure that we're all being safe. And um, yeah, before I go, I just want to say, you know, I'm thinking about my whole music family and everybody out there who's struggling. Like we're all in this together and um i'm always here and people are free to dm me if they have questions or you if you want me to be one of those people you network with like please message me i love talking about the music business and i love talking about being a singer so i'd be more than happy to extend a hand or an ear that's awesome yeah. thank you yeah and also and a big shout out to um everybody on their awards last night for the san diego yeah that's awards. what oh, thanks for saying that because i was like don't forget but like yeah. oh my gosh so many great people what rebecca jade got yes on. yeah that's so cool i know and nathan hubbard took two awards last night and just everybody i just chloe this is just the best thing that chloe one best pop album because she's my roommate and I'm just I've seen just how hard she works and how oh I'm just bursting with pride I'm so happy yeah. so here's yeah. crossing my fingers for next year for my I'm gonna submit my EP so we'll see what happens yeah yeah I but thanks totally for having see me that happening yeah <laughs> thanks for doing this it was really great talking with you and yeah everybody have a great night we'll see you next time good night good night